Hi everyone, today we'll be covering um, a couple of cardiology related approaches for the PACES uh, exam. We'll be covering chest pain, palpitations, hypertension, lower limb swelling. Most of these approaches are fairly familiar approaches. So I'll suggest for the purposes of, of preparation of the exam, uh, one might choose to focus on some of the more PACES unique uh, conditions and to factor in these gaps in one's preparation process. So for chest pain, just a quick recap in terms of life-threatening causes. Um, this would include uh, acute coronary syndromes, aortic dissections, pulmonary embolism, esophageal ruptures, as well as tension to motorex. Um, it is always important to ensure that the red flags are adequately addressed in any um, paces uh, station two or five um, exam. And uh, some of the more paces you did cases would be in the context of a suspected dissection to consider underlying morphans um, for pulmonary embolism, uh, hypercoagulable states is something to consider. Um, likewise, with tension pneumothorax as well, uh, that can also happen in morphans. So for chest pain, um, in terms of the systems involved, uh, one can think of it in terms of cardiovascular and for cardiovascular, um, not to forget the vascular aspect of things, uh, because uh, sometimes in patients who present with like an acute coronary syndrome, uh, apart from underlying atherosclerotic disease, there may be underlying arteritis as well uh, due to secondary vasculitic disorders. Um, don't forget also pericarditis as a cardiac cause of chest pain, uh, where there can be underlying secondary etiologies like lupus, uh, underlying renal disorders or post infectious causes. Anemia is another uh, important cause not to forget because in patients with anemia, um, they can present with angina symptoms because there is a relative uh, hypo uh, perfusion or rather um, suboptimal state of oxygen delivery uh, to the coronaries. Um, the second group would be respiratory disorders. Um, most respiratory disorders can cause some form of pleuritic chest pain, uh, but I think pneumothorax would probably be uh, one of the more um, common disorders that causes pronounced chest pains amongst the respiratory disorders. The third group would be the GI conditions. I think this is a group that is important not to forget. Uh, esophagitis uh, can present as chest pain as the main presenting complaint, um, where sometimes the uh, the odynophagia may be first and foremost perceived as a chest pain, hence uh, seeking meal associations um, associated other GI symptoms uh, would be important. In the context of esophagitis, then one needs to look for causes uh, and uh, candidiasis from underlying retroviral disease is an important cause uh, to exclude. And the last group would be that of muscular and cutaneous disorders, so conditions like chondrochondritis, costochondritis, uh, a bit zoster are uh, conditions to consider and associations with movement and touch uh, would be important to elicit. Um, the next approach is that to palpitations. Uh, I think of it slightly artificially as whether it's uh, due to an underlying cardiac problem or whether it's extra cardiac. And for cardiac problems, uh, I think of it in terms of whether it's uh, primary conduction problem, as in prolonged QT that can either be uh, congenital or um, acquired from um, things like drugs, uh, electrolyte disturbances. Uh, Brugada, WPW uh, would be other inherent uh, conduction problems. Uh, although these are not that common in the PACER Station 5 exam, uh, but potentially in the Station 2, where a young patient comes in with a um, either palpitations or suggestion of underlying ventricular arrhythmia, uh, then uh, congenital conduction defect um, could be considered. The next group would be structural problems. And I think uh, Hockham and valvular pathology uh, would be important to consider. Uh, and for the extra cardiac group, endocrine disorders like thyroid disease and pheochromocytoma are probably the um, commonest uh, causes of palpitations in the context of uh, a station five exam as such. Um, uh, palpitations can also be due to sinus tachycardia. And we know that many, many disorders um, can cause sinus tachycardia. However, 
I would say that a few conditions are important to consider. Anemia, um, pulmonary embolism, and drugs uh, such as sympathomimetics, uh, beta agonists, etc. Uh, these are common culprits for sinus tachycardia. In the context of uh, atrial fibrillation, um, while there are many causes, I think valvular heart disease and thyroid disease uh, are two important considerations because uh, they often come along with physical signs uh, that can hence make it a good case for a station 5 um, exam. The next approach is that to hypertension. This is something that we see uh, on a daily basis. Uh, and in medical school, uh, many of us use the mnemonic RENAL, R-E-N-A-L, to help to remember the causes of uh, hypertension. Um, so for renal disorders, uh, actually in patients with underlying renal problems, they can get hypertension, be it in the acute context uh, of, let's say, an AKI, um, or let's say in chronic kidney disease where their fluid status is suboptimally controlled, uh, they can get hypertension. Uh, but I think a few disorders to bear in mind, especially for the PACES exam, would be number one, glomerulonephritis. So if there are associated symptoms such as hematuria, uh, frothy urine, uh, this is important to, to consider. Scleroderma renal crisis is also another important condition uh, in someone with, let's say, acute protracted hypertension and uh, renal artery stenosis. Um, the second group of endocrine uh, disorders uh, are, are multiple. So conditions such as Graves, Cushing's, acromegaly, Cons, and Pheochromosexoma all can cause uh, hypertension. Hence, uh, taking a, a targeted history to elicit some of these endocrinological disorders is important. Uh, neurogenic is not that common. Patients with face intracranial pressure, they can get Cushing's reflex causing hypertension. Um, for aortic disorders, uh, I would say two big groups. So coarctation of aorta, um, as well as uh, vasculitis. So vasculitis, such as Takayasu's, uh, is an important cause of hypertension that needs to be considered in the PACES exam. So one might seek symptoms such as uh, claudication, uh, other systems being affected, and uh, evaluating the pulses uh, methodically. Uh, L stands for labor hypertension that's associated with white coat uh, in, in clinical encounters. And I think there are a few other groups not to forget. Uh, pregnancy is something that is important to consider, especially uh, in the station two uh, context where it could, if it's, a, if it's a female patient in childbearing age, preeclampsia in the context of hypertension is something to consider. Uh, obstructive uh, sleep apnea uh, is also a common cause of a secondary hypertension, and it can be associated with some uh, PACES favorites uh, conditions such as acromegaly, hypothyroidism, and Down syndrome, and uh, drugs are also an important cause. At this point in time, I'd also like to highlight uh, a common uh, scenario that may come up is that of a patient with neurofibromatosis. Uh, and in patients with NF, there are three common causes of uh, hypertension. Number one, uh, renal artery stenosis. Uh, number two, pheochromocytoma. And number three, coarctation of the aorta. So these three conditions are associated with neuro neurofibromatosis type one. The last approach is that of lower limb swelling. Once again, this is something that we see very commonly, uh, but I think the challenge then is to incorporate some of the less common disorders uh, into one's framework uh, of, uh, of approaching this, uh, this symptom. So lower limb swelling can be, uh, the, the way I think of it is whether it's a bilateral swelling or whether it's a unilateral swelling. And for bilateral swelling, I think of it in terms of three big groups. Number one is the fluid overload states. Number two is other systemic disorders that can cause bilateral lower limb swelling. And number three is uh, it's actually local problems such as uh, chronic venous insufficiency, lymph edema, or even pelvic mass compression uh, that causes uh, bilateral lower limb swelling. So I would say by and large, the, in the PACES exam, the fluid overload and systemic disorders uh, would probably be the commoner ones that feature uh, for fluid overload, I think of it in terms of whether it's an it's a intravascular or extravascular overload. So for intravascular overload, usually we think of it in terms of uh, cardiac and renal uh, disorders. 
So um, it's important then to ask for other associated cardiac symptoms, uh, whether or not there's any um, substrate suggestion of underlying cardiomyopathy. Uh, and renal disorders, a patient who comes in with, uh, with like glomerulonephritis, with uh, severe renal impairment, maybe in a fluid overload state uh, intravascularly. So these patients tend to have shortness of breath, uh, orthopnea, and paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea as well. In terms of the extravascular group, this is usually driven by hypoalbuminemia. And I think there are a few big groups to think about. Number one is nephrotic syndrome. Number two, uh, would be that of a chronic liver disease. Number three would be protein losing enteropathies. And number four, malignancy, uh, or actually any form of chronic diseases that can uh, cause uh, albumin to be low in the long run. Um, while scler scleroderma renal crisis isn't, uh, strictly speaking, uh, a cause of nephrotic syndrome per se, they do lose uh, protein fairly significantly and they can present uh, with uh, lower limb swelling. So that is an important cause to bear in mind. Um, in terms of systemic disorders, thyroid disorders, uh, both um, in Gray's disease, where they have pre mixed edema, or in hypothyroidism, where they just get uh, low limb edema, are con uh, conditions to, to think about. And don't forget drug-related causes, such as uh, calcium channel blockers. For the unilateral group, um, I, think, uh, I think of it in terms of the different structures in the lower limb. Uh, so you can think of your uh, neurovascular structures, so such as the veins causing DVT. Um, if there's a lymphatic drainage problems, it can be the lymph edema on one side. If it's soft tissue, it can be cellulitis, hematoma. Uh, for the joints, it can be arthritis. And for the bones, uh, it could be bony tumors. So um, just to be comprehensive in the approach, if it's a unilateral lower limb swelling, you, want, you may want to find out exactly which part of the lower limb uh, has sustained this swelling. And just to quickly cover nephrotic syndrome, because it is a very common cause of uh, lower limb swelling, both uh, in, in our clinical practice as well as in the PACES uh, exam. Uh, so I think first and foremost, nephrotic syndrome uh, can be thought of in terms of primary and secondary etiologies. For the secondary group, there are many causes. I think firstly, uh, diabetes mellitus is an important cause. And, uh, we are also seeing more obesity and metabolic syndrome related uh, nephrotic syndrome. So obesity related FSGS is a cause to consider in patients uh, with increased habitus. Infectious causes are uh, Hep B, Hep C, HIV, uh, and sometimes para-infectious um, etiologies are important. Uh, autoimmune disorders such as lupus. Lupus causes both uh, stretches the full spectrum from nephrotic to nephritic, so they can present the nephrotic picture. Paraproteinemias, multiple myeloma in older patients, and amyloidosis is an important uh, condition to consider. So for amyloidosis, uh, many of the uh, um, endo, uh, sorry, rheumatological disorders uh, can cause secondary uh, amyloidosis. So this is uh, something to, to bear uh, in mind uh, when one approaches the bilateral lower limb swelling that is likely associated with uh, nephrotic syndrome. Malignancy, so we do know that malignancies are associated with membranous uh, nephropathy and some drugs like NSAIDs, penicillamine, Captopro can sometimes cause uh, uh, nephrotic syndrome as well. So I would say that nephrotic, that lower limb swelling is, um, is, is a, an approach in the PACER Station 5 exam that can sometimes have really quite multiple layers. So um, you, at the outset, uh, assess the patient to have bilateral lower limb swelling. And let's say um, there are features of uh, frothy urine, uh, there's an Anasaka kind of picture, and you're suspecting that it's a nephrotic syndrome. Then uh, the next question is, what is the nephrotic syndrome due to? And a, a common, uh, not too uncommon uh, scenario would be that this could be driven by uh, underlying amyloidosis. And then one would have to take a targeted history to elicit uh, whether or not there are secondary causes to the amyloidosis. Um, so this is something to just bear in mind in one's preparation. Thank you.